Good evening. My name is Nadia Bukhara. I'm from the London Bridge Business Improvement District. Welcome to this uh, joint networking event that's um, at the Unicorn Theatre. It's good to see the amount of businesses that are interested in meeting and greeting their neighbours. Our guest speaker this evening is well known and um, he is here to um, present the business winning meetings. Um, his experience in both the education and business sector fully qualifies him on this topic. Um, and I would like to present Mr. Martin Tartill from Tartill Consultancies uh, to present um, this evening's topic of business winning meetings. Thank you very much. Hmm. Can you all hear me? Fantastic. So, first message, hello. Nice to meet you. My name's Martin Tottle and I run Tothill Consulting. Um, we're a management development consultancy, so I spend my time doing one of three things, really. Um, I design and deliver a lot of training courses to my clients, which can span management skills right through to negotiation skills, even training trainer skills, um, and many others. Um, I'm an executive coach as well, so I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with my clients when they need it. Um, and I also do a lot of business development work with my clients, which is helping them to build their business. And I'm hoping I will build with them. So there is that kind of mutual benefit within that. Um, and I suppose in that guise tonight, I've come to talk to you tonight to share some ideas, really, about business winning meetings. Um, I've had my successes, I've had a few failures, and I've learned along the way. And what I wanted to do is think about how I could help you, particularly with your businesses, in sharing a few hints and tips, if you like. This isn't going to be a super masterclass on how to be the world's greatest, but it's actually thinking about what are the small things that you can do in those situations that will help you build your business. So I got thinking, I was thinking, what would be the sorts of things that might help you? How about those meetings that we go to? How about thinking, in a fairly quick way, preparing more effectively for those meetings rather than the, well, let's just bowl up and see what happens type approach. So I've got a few thoughts around that that might give you some ideas. Um, actually, when you're in the room of those meetings that you think, this is the big one, this is going to be the clincher, actually doing something in the room that will make a difference, that will really help perhaps your target or an existing client go, yes, I'd like some of that, I'd like more of that, please actually being able to influence people within your, in, in your presence. And ultimately, the big carrot at the end of the evening is actually let's increase our chances. The amount of effort that we put into business development as business owners and business leaders, let's give ourselves a bit of a better chance. Let's, let's have that slight edge on the other people who might be doing similar things to us. But my big message to you is you're in business, you're still in business. So you're probably doing something right. There are things that you're doing when you're in the room or when you're around the people who give you business that actually you should keep and you should pat yourself on the back and say, there are things I do that work. But my hints and tips that I'm going to offer tonight maybe give you an insight into say, yeah, actually there might be one or two things that actually I could start to do that will make a difference. So that's where this evening is going. There's a little bit of interaction as well. There's going to be a few moments where you can kind of share some thoughts and also do some work with your immediate neighbours as well. But all will be revealed. Setting the scene, really, in terms of why business-winning meetings might be of interest to you. I know it's of interest to me. There's a very, very close link between being good at this and my back pocket. And I'm quite motivated to do this. And so I wondered particularly from your perspective, why you've come along this evening. Um, business development meetings. I mean, we attend a lot of meetings, perhaps, in our working day. But what's so different about business development meetings? Any thoughts from, from the floor? What, 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 what distinguishes regular meetings to business development meetings? Any thoughts? You know the people you're meeting with. Yes. Yeah. So perhaps... There's some, some warmth already there in terms of how well you know them. So that could be a real advantage. What else might be different about these sorts of meetings? 
You want to be there. You're very motivated to be there. Absolutely. Let's have a final thought. What makes these meetings so different? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, my thoughts are, tonight is not going to be about the pushy sales tactic. It's not about that breaking the deal, haha. I think these meetings are all about building relationships. They're about building really, really deep personal relationships with the people you do work with. And also, they're about building really good business relationships. And my approach is you can do the personal first, and I'm sure the business will follow. So I'm going to show you some ideas and introduce you to some thoughts that will probably complement your own ideas around how we might do this slightly more effectively. I believe out there there is something, I genuinely believe there's something out there called a lifelong client. Someone who I can do business with who will feed me for a very, very long time. But you won't acquire those sorts of people straight away. They don't just turn over and go, yeah, I'll provide you with a lifelong set of business that you can just feed yourself with. I think it takes a number of steps to get there. And I just want to sort of set the scene around what, what we might be thinking about as we approach these meetings, about how far down the line we might be. And once we've worked out how far down the line we might be, is doing the right thing at the right time. There are people out there who don't know you. They don't know your business, and they don't know the wonderful things that you can do. So who's missing a trick there? And I think, in these early stages of the relationship, we can gently move people on to say, this is me, this is what I do. Let me tell you a little about, about the things that I, I get involved in. And we can nudge them along that little chain of events that hopefully get us to the top. Once they've worked out what we do, we could do some things in the room, and if we think about it, the formality or informality doesn't really matter around the, the setting and where we meet. It might be over a coffee, it might be sat around quite a fancy table, but in fact, we're still doing the same simple things. And once they know what we do, we want to do the sorts of things around them that make them warm to us, make them predisposed to saying, if I ever needed the services that you provide, I think I'd come to you. And so they tick that box to say, yeah, I could do business with you. And it's small steps all the way. So, with that under our belt, we move on. They try something, they like it, they come back for more. And we have those small baby steps all along the way, hopefully to a point when, whenever they're in trouble, whenever they kind of feel a little bit in need of some support, they will come to you because you can help them out. And ultimately, once we get to the top of that, they tell their friends about you as well. And they say, if you're ever in a tight spot, call so-and-so, they're great. So what we want to do is think about how we can move these people up this chain of events. To set the scene really and give context to these business development meetings, I'm guessing we're sort of in this area. This is kind of the early stages of, of, of the meeting. We might have done work with them before, and we might not have. But we're starting pretty much in the early phases of a relationship in order to build the business. Now, if we've done work with them before, great. They know us, they like us, we're slightly ahead. But I still believe there are people out there that we can do some quite simple things around to move them up the chain slightly quicker. Okay. So, it's really simple, and I thought we could break this down in terms of our business winning meeting skills into three things. And you know probably what they are. What you do before an event or a meeting, what you can do during the meeting, and some simple stuff to continue the good stuff after the meeting as well. And once again, we're into hints and tips territory. Okay. Before. Hmm. I'm guessing what you're thinking about before the meeting. You've got that meeting highlighted in your diary. You're thinking, this is the big one. Or maybe it's a speculative, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens but it's there in your diary. What sort of things are you thinking about before you go? Now, here's some thoughts. Do your homework. It sounds really patronising, but what are you going to do before that event that will put you in a really, really good place to make sure that you make the maximum opportunity of what's going on? I'm going to show you how to do some homework in a minute. 
how about, why are you going to that meeting? What's driving you? What's motivating you? Why don't you set some goals, some really simple goals, around what you want to get out of that meeting? Now, if we're trying to, we're not kind of doing the deal, trying to break the deal and make the quick sale, because that might actually have an impact as well. If we go back to my definition of a business development meeting, which is, let's build a relationship. Actually, one of your goals could be, I just want to get on, and actually, I quite like to be invited back for another meeting. And it's a very, very simple goal to set yourself. I'm just going to get on with this person. However, there might be some other things, maybe float some ideas, I want to introduce them to my team, I want to tell them about the great stuff that I've done. But if you can be clear about why you're going and what you want to say and do and appear to be within that meeting, that might be a really simple thing that you could think about before you go. How often do we ask this question when we go to these meetings? Why are they coming? It's their time. They're probably busy people, but there's possibly a reason that they're looking for something to get out of this meeting. So I would spend some time thinking about what's going on in their world to motivate them to come to a meeting to talk to you about the great stuff you do. So this is where I help you with your homework. Help with your homework. I came up with this very simple box method, if you like, from having gone to quite a few meetings and thinking, well, I'm going to meet client X. I'm sure we're going to talk about training because that's most of the stuff that I do. So we get into talking about stuff and da 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 da. And then suddenly, out of the conversation, comes this whole kind of left field issue that I hadn't even thought about. And it was like, if only I'd done some extra thinking before that meeting around maybe some broader themes that have, could have come out of that meeting. Because I'm guaranteeing the person that you meet will have a particular agenda. But that person will be within an organisation that itself may have its own agenda. And then that organisation will also exist within an industry of its own. So we could break down this meeting into, I wonder which way it's going to go. And I would say with all of those areas, we could think about some short-term things that might help them out. Maybe some mid-tier things that might help them out. And perhaps more longer-term things that are looking to get from from themselves, from the organisation, or the industry. And we got nine possibilities of where a conversation might go. So I'm thinking you could scribble that down in a taxi going to the meeting, perhaps, if you're really pressed for time, and just sketch out. Oh, I wonder what, where this might go. Or thinking about it, actually, we did mention on the, on the phone that he's kind of looking to go places, and I wonder where that might go. So, based on what you do in your business, there might be a useful area to discuss here. Or it might go somewhere else. You think, mm, well, maybe, thinking about the organisation, yeah, it's got its own goals itself, it's got to deliver that profit to its shareholders. Maybe there's something there that I could help them out with. Maybe, even in the strangest world of guys who make pizza might be short, there might be a global cheese shortage. And they have this mad idea to say, maybe we can help them out. A bit of cheese in the garage. But we have this mad idea that this is broad as you want to make it. It's a nice little tip to say, I'm going to a meeting. There could be a whole range of issues that might come out of this business meeting. If I give it a little bit of thought before I go, based on what I do and how I could help that client, I am prepared. I can perhaps take on any conversation wherever it might go. So that's the thought. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's not rocket science, but it might be a framework within, within which it could give you the opportunity to think through some possibilities. Now, it's not going to be comprehensive and it's not going to be all-encompassing because conversations go all over the place. But it might give you a bit of prep. Okay? Think about that. I think it's on the handout that you can take away. But clearly... You know, there will be a range of issues that a business might be facing, which might be worth discussing if that's something you could help them with. But also, don't forget the person. They might be completely stacked in the office with no admin support. Wow, we do online typing services. We could help you there. 
And actually you've got almost a hook into a conversation to say, let us help you. So it's a little technique that might actually broaden the possibility of where that conversation might go. Help with your homework, all right? What happens when you're in the meeting? Settled down, poured the coffee, unwrapped the foil-wrapped biscuits that we get out for special occasions. And actually, we're kind of thinking, what's going to happen in that room that's going to help me and also help that other person make a sensible decision to say, yes, you're the sort of person I want to be doing work with. First things first, we forget this so often. We run into the meeting, the agenda's in our head. In fact, our agenda is in our head. And we forget the simple stuff. It's like, don't forget that the people buy people. And probably the first box they're looking to tick is, do I like you? Are you the sort of person I trust my business with? So we want to make sure that we do that simple stuff. So here's something I want you to try out really quickly now and go maybe on this one. What are we like when we first meet people? Particularly you get into a room, or if we haven't met them for some time, when we meet them again to refresh those first impressions. I use this. Have you come across this before? What are the first 30s that really matter when you meet somebody? The first 30 seconds, absolutely. You walk into a room and already someone's making some assumption some forming some impression about what you like, what you're like. It might be how you look, how you stand, how close you are to them. It could be how crunchable your handshake is, or how wet it is. But there is that first 30 seconds that may really, really count. What other 30s are really important on first impressions? The first 30? Words, words absolutely. Hi there, I'm Fingy, innit? You know, it's not necessarily going to make the best impression. Hello. Martin Totter, pleased to meet you. And you have this wonderful kind of, perhaps rehearsed, little introduction that works really well for you. This is who I am. This is what I do. It's great to see you. You know that kind of positivity in the language that you're using? So the first 30 seconds, the first 30 words, and the first 30... This is a tough one. Centimetres. They're probably not going to clock your shoes straight away. They might. But they'll probably look for something in your face that just kind of says, you're right. You're not smiling like a clown, but you've got a warmth in your face that they think, yeah, you look all right. So we make some good eye contact, and it seems to be working. So remember that. Next time you walk into a room and you see somebody, 30, 30, 30. Right, get busy time. I want you to try this really quickly. Just a real opportunity, just to get some real-time feedback on what is your personal impact like? Now, it might work if you're sat next to somebody who you know, and they can give you some really, really incisive feedback on really what they're like. It's a great opportunity. Now I'm going to tell you what I think of you. <laughs> or you might actually go to somebody who you've never met before, just to say, what am I like? We've never met before. How do you do? So let's try this out. It's going to take two minutes, very, very quickly. And what I'd like you to do is just turn to somebody near you, one of your neighbours, and just introduce yourself and tell them what you're going to do this weekend. As simple as that. And this is a great little trick, great little thing for someone to give you an opinion on how you come across. Then I want you to swap over. That's the time the other person, you can turn it round, they can introduce themselves to you and tell them a little bit about their weekend. If you're really clever at this, you could probably mix it up and do both at the same time. All right? But don't get too complicated, all right? Um, what I would like you to focus on, particularly by the end of this activity, is just being, being, being quite honest and offering up somebody some, some really useful feedback to say, this is how you look when you talk to me. You know, we can look at the eyes and all sorts of things to say, yeah, that's how you look. And this is actually how you sound. And very, very briefly, there might just be one or two things that you could just comment on, on their own personal impact. But I think it, it might just give you something to take away around, could I do something around my personal impact that would really help me in those one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two situations that really help me to come across in the way I want to come across? So, are we clear what we're going to do? Are we ready? You've had a glass of wine, it doesn't matter. Come on then, 
Turn to your neighbour. I'm going to give you two minutes to introduce yourselves and talk about your weekend. I'll pause you and then I'll ask you to do some feedback. So, off you go. What I'd like you to do now is just take it in turns, just to offer a little bit of feedback, maybe something to keep, something to change about something that you liked about their personal impact, maybe something that they could work on. But just spend two minutes now just sharing a little bit of feedback about personal impact and first impressions. Off you go. So what we're actually focusing on is the idea that we meet people for the first time, or maybe after a little while, and we get back into the room with them, or it's the first time we've met them, and actually we enhance or we increase our chances of doing really good business just by getting on. And how often do we forget to do that? We've got all this other stuff thinking, oh, my brochures and my business cards, and oh, all this stuff to ram down their throat at any point of mentioning, oh, I'm interested in this. Actually, we forget to do the really simple stuff first. So think about that. Don't forget your 30, 30, 30. So we've done our first things first. We're kind of getting on and we haven't spilt the coffee and we haven't upset anybody. We're nice and settled in the room. This is a nice tip that I've really learned to do, particularly as someone who's selling a lot of service-based products, if you like. I, I kind of provide a whole range of training things for my clients. Um, not rushing to that whole kind of sale moment. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Oh, yes, I could sell you that. Oh, yes, I could walk your dog as well. So there's that kind of mad moment where anything that they're, they're looking to, to help for help with, you, you're kind of on that sell every time. Why don't we go gently about exploring some of the issues that they're facing at the moment and, and lightly probing their, their thoughts around how things are at the moment and just thinking about, oh, yeah... That's something we, we might be able to help you with. And actually, the, your choice of words could really actually help in terms of almost just floating selling messages into a business meeting, but not in that hard selly way, just a few suggestions. I'll tell you a tip I use, actually. A great phrase I've kind of developed, but it's the, would it be helpful if? <laughs> and it's got me so much work, because all you do is you just su suggest something that really would be helpful. So would it be helpful if, if, if I put some thought to that and put that in an email and uh, perhaps just kind of sketched out maybe an idea or two that could really help you out? And it's the would it be helpful if is so, so soft. But actually, if you've done your thinking and you've done your listening and you've found out really what's kind of going on in their mind, it usually works. And actually, everybody's looking for the right answer. I'm in a, I'm in a really important meeting and I'm, I'm looking for the right thing to say. You know, the right price and the right product and all those things. And actually, how many times have you thought, whoa, hang on a moment, I, I don't know if this is the right answer. Why don't I just find out a little bit more before, before I really step over that line and start committing to some sensible suggestions? So questions in a business meeting are really, really useful. I'm going to talk a little bit about questions in a minute. But think about how often you've done all the talking in a meeting. Now, talking in business meetings is really hard work. It's... And it's like, hang on. Why don't I just pause for a minute, ask a really good question like, so how's business? And sit back. And you'll find out more. Every business meeting I go to, I want to come out of that room knowing more about the person, more about their business. And then I'm informed to make some smarter decisions, perhaps later on, about making some really good suggestions. So think about that. Think about the power of questions in these meetings. So I've got a range of skills that you could be thinking about, some of which you might be doing already. Some of them you think, yeah, I do that in a meeting. Heh, <laughs> tick. Or you might be thinking, crikey, um, I've never even thought about doing that. OK, let's get the start off to a tea. Simple things like someone offers you a drink. No, thanks. You started, you started the meeting with a no. Just take the drink and just get comfortable. You know, get some agreement around the table. We're easy. We're comfortable with each other. 
chit chat. The chit and the chat. How awkward do we feel about, oh no, we've got to talk about business. And actually, how often do we miss a trick about the technical parlance is building rapport. But chit-chat just works. Even if it's just a light one-minute conversation about what have you been up to recently? How are things going? How's your day been? Simple things like that can just actually ease you into a conversation where there's no hard sell and no kind of business stuff. You're just kind of getting your feet under the table. So a little bit of chit and a little bit of chat, or both. How about going into meetings without this concrete fixed agenda about, I want to talk about this, this, and this, because that's what I want to talk about. How about getting into some meetings and saying, I brought some thoughts along with me today, but um, what would you like to talk about? Now, that's a really nice consultative way of finding out what's on their mind, because you never know the last time you spoke on the phone to being in the room with them, some bombshell could have gone off or something could have really hit home and it's like, oh, we've changed it all around. So why don't we spend a little bit of time at the beginning of meetings saying, so what can we talk about? We can set the time, we've got an hour, we've got 15 minutes. What's going to be really useful for you in this next discussion that I can bring to the table? So let's develop that. We can develop an event agenda and not have this fixed thing that we go with. I like this phrase, curiously inquisitive. And it's not being nosy. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually genuinely being interested in, A, the person, what are they up to, and also their business. And it's just asking those gentle questions about what's going on at the moment. And I think even if stuff's going on and there's not strictly anything you could be doing to help with that, but a genuine interest about how things are ticking on, business people love talking about their business. So give them an opportunity just to tell you a little bit about that. Because that could, that could add into your pot of, I want to leave this meeting knowing more, why don't you ask those questions? Some more stuff, open questions. The who, what, why, where, when. Actually, those sorts of open questions are always going to deliver more information. You busy? It's not necessarily going to give you much. Yes. Oh, next question. How's business? It's going to deliver much more information. What are you up to at the moment? Where are things going? How's that project we talked about on the phone the other week? Nice, big, whopping wide questions. will also give you a bit of time to do some thinking and take the pressure off you to have to do all the singing and dancing in this meeting. You want to appear calm and collected. Do that by open, asking questions and being a very good listener. Now we think, ah, oh, listening, that's a piece of cake. Well, I suffer from man ears, okay? And man ears are usually tuned to having a conversation with predominantly other men, not listening, waiting for an opportunity to jump in and then tell them what you want to tell them. And so we have this kind of level one listening, which is just looking for opportunities to say what you want to say, pauses along the way. What if we kind of up our stakes and go to level two listening? And level two listening is all about, yeah, I can hear the words you're saying and it's making sense. That can just about get you through. Why don't we become level three listeners? When in fact, what we're doing is we're listening with our ears. We're listening with our eyes. We're picking up all the information they're giving us. So you say, how's business? And they go, that's okay. Do you go, oh, great, it's okay? Or do you read that message and you go, tell us a bit more about that then. What's up? And actually by being a really good listener, and sometimes it's called active listening because you're demonstrating the fact that you are listening as well, can really pay. People feel very special when they're listened to. And if you want to raise your impact and get people to tick that box to say, yeah, I like you, become a really good listener. Three top tips. If you can't do it, you might need to fake it. Nod, flash, and grunt when you listen. Okay, so it's... So show them you're listening. Bit of flashing. Easy. Um, so just a little bit of facial gestures. You kind of sort of going... Not too much, but a little bit. We'll just kind of give them the feedback to say, yeah, it's making sense. 
A bit of grunting? Mm-hmm. Mm. <sighs> oh. So just a little bit of that will hopefully demonstrate the fact that you are genuinely listening. Or you could do advanced grunting, if you like. Anybody want to? Which is just using words. Wow. Really fantastic. Brilliant. Golly. Or whatever it might be. But you're just showing, I am listening to you. It's making sense. And people feel so special when that's going on. So give it a go if you haven't tried it. Um, pings to me in meetings are very, very important. You're talking about da 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 And someone will go, yeah, but of course, I've never done that before. I'm way too scared to do that. And I'm thinking, crikey, I could do I, oh, I'm sure there's something in that. Now, you don't need to seize on it, like, wah! But you could log that, and you could just be a little bit mindful of some of the, some of the little green lights that are happening in the meeting and think, oh, I can, that's, that's interesting. So it might be a case of just logging some of those and actually just probing them a little bit more by saying, oh, have you thought about... Or have you considered? And actually, just by managing those pings gently with the perhaps maybe would it be helpful if I da 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 da, and you think that's a really gentle way of influencing somebody perhaps to be more warm to you. So pings, think about those how they crop up. You know, as soon as I'm in a room and someone, because of the nature of my business, which is about development, as soon as there's something stopping somebody doing something, I'm kind of Ah, right, perhaps that's something I could help with. So I might explore that a little bit more. Or at least come back to it, maybe make a note of that and say, and perhaps we might get onto that a little bit later. If not there, it could be for another conversation. But we've logged it. This is really important, actually, and it may help your clients or your targets or the people who you're going to meetings with clarify their thoughts about the chaos that is their life. Because towards the end of a meeting, or during meetings, you might say, that's really interesting, Bob, because what I'm hearing is you've, you've got this, and this, and, and, and this seems to be a bit of an issue as well. And by doing these like mini-summaries or praises through a meeting, can actually give real shape to an issue or a problem or something that someone's been grappling with for months. So little summaries along the way can work. And always do this. It's been a great meeting. It's always been a great meeting, no matter what. OK? Take that one away. Because it's, it's one of those things. First impressions, yes, but last impressions as well. The last bit of a meeting, we want to finish on a high as well. It's been great chatting about this and this and this. And maybe now's not the, night, the right time to be pushing ahead with perhaps some of the things that we can do, but... We should keep in touch. I'm sure maybe in, in a fortnight's time or a couple of months, perhaps we should get back together again because there could be something else in it. So there's an opportunity to finish the meeting with a nice kind of shape that kind of feels right. And actually, there's either action points coming out, out of this to say, absolutely. If they're on their knees and going, I need what you've got, it would be impolite, wouldn't it, to say, oh, think about that. There's nothing worse than somebody really wanting the business off you and you going, I'll see. Because they're kind of thinking, perhaps they can't do it. Perhaps that's not what they do. And, and don't hold back, because if they genuinely are interested, perhaps we do need to move that on. But as a rule, there may well be an opportunity simply just to finish quite gently in the meeting, where it feels good and there's still opportunity to run. Because I said a lifelong client takes a while business cards at the end. People fumble, it's all a bit awkward. Think of a nice little way where you can offer up a business card or get a business card because that contact details are very, very important. So it might be a case of saying, do you have a card? You know, there's, there's, there's got to be some scope in this. So, so let's, let's keep in touch and we might well do that. So make sure that the information doesn't fall out. So these are sorts of things we could be thinking about during the meeting. It's not necessarily the nuts and bolts of what we do, but it's the way it's delivered. And think about that. For all the things that your businesses have and all the products and services that you could offer, think about the way in which you present them. Think about the way in which you manage that process through the meeting that could genuinely, I believe, and it does work because I do it and I win business, 
by getting on with the personal relationship and building into the business relationship. And these things work. Okay. And after. Oh. There's nothing more annoying than someone saying, I'll pop that in the post. I'll send you an email. I'll give you a call ne- next week. And they don't. And there should be no reason by, by any shape or form the fact that you've said something in a meeting, we must always act on it. Because the first mistake is kind of like, it's the fly in the ointment. Well, if they can't do that, what's their service or product going to be like? And some people call them coffee stains. You know, I think it, it was coined by an executive in, um, um, in an airline. He said, if you, you pull down your little plastic tray in the, air, in the aeroplane, just about to set off, and you've got those nasty little coffee stains on the table, and you think, well, if they can't, can't clean the tables, and I wonder if they can f- maintain the engines. And you get that thin end of the wedge. So make sure that if you promise or you suggest or you offer anything in these meetings, you absolutely deliver, because that's going to be the litmus paper, if you like. Anything else that you can do. Now, there might be something directly related to the, the, the product or service that your business offers that might be an additional kind of an extension bit of selling. Yeah, we could do that as well. Or simply the power of these networks that you get involved in here. The people that you know, would it be helpful if I put you in touch with so-and-so? Because I think they could probably help you here. So suddenly become a really useful person to know. Not because your business is great, but actually you've got a whole range of contacts that they could use as well. I've had clients call me up and say, you couldn't recommend a plumber, could you? It's like, I could. And there is that magic moment where you are genuinely helping them out. We will meet again. Always, there are always that possibility that something's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen now, it might happen in a little time. So I would be fairly persistent with just keeping these relationships warm and investing some time and effort in them. It might be just a a catch-up call in a couple of days. So what are my final thoughts on business winning meetings? I genuinely believe if you do this stuff well, it will build your business. It will provide you with the difference to perhaps some of the other people out there who aren't investing in the people, the people relationship, to in order to develop the the business relationship. And these simple things really, really do count. They really do matter. And absolutely, make these meetings people-centred. I would more than happily talk for 45 minutes in a business development meeting about football, about holidays, about kids, about anything, if that feels right in the room. If you get very, very chatty individuals who quite like a little bit of chit and chat, I would go with it. I'd, I'd, I'd read the situation carefully. Because I think if you invest and you put the foundation in that relationship early on, you'll be surprised how easy it is to do that other stuff. And I've been in meetings where the last thing we say at the end, of the guy or whoever it might be might say, do you want to pop us a proposal in the post or ping it over by email next week? Yeah, fine. Bye. And I've, I've, I've done that and it, it, just, it just feels right if you get the right level of business and banter in a meeting and you, and you read the, the people situation. And that's very, very important. Don't offer them something they don't want. It sounds obvious. But don't have those brochures buzzing in your briefcase to say, at any chance they mention X, I'm going to stuff it down their throat. Why don't you suggest something that they genuinely want, find out more about what they want, and then make some sensible propositions that are tailored genuinely to the sorts of things that they're after. It might be something you can help them with. It could actually be something that's a little bit too big or a little bit too small than what you do. But there may well be ways in which you could, in a consultative kind of way, help them find the solution that they want. It will build the relationship between you and them. It may take time. I've sometimes pursued clients for 12, 14, 18 months. Let's go for a coffee, let's catch up exchange a few holiday photos, whatever it might be, however the relationship evolves, but we've kept in touch. And then there's a point when they go, oh, I think I'm going to need Martin. And they get on the phone. They've got my details. They know me. 
I've kind of ticked quite a few boxes perhaps along the way. We have a relationship. They say, now is the time I need you. And we have that initial opportunity or a further opportunity, and it evolves. But I'd say keep at it. You go to a meeting and think, nothing much happened there. Actually, look on the positive side. You spent some time with them. You may be spending more time with them than other competitors in the market. And actually, the fact that you've got your foot in the door could give you the edge. And I think that's very, very important to make sure that you think, because you're not billing yet or you're not invoicing yet, doesn't mean that the relationship isn't evolving. OK? So like all good meetings, is there any other business? Anybody got any questions for me in terms of, yes, Martin, but what about? Any thoughts? Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. But is there ever a point at which it becomes almost embarrassing if you keep getting knocked back? Yeah, I think you do need to read the situation. Once you've been clouted over the head <laughs> the umpteenth time, you think, is this really working? Um, I, I have kind of a bit of an odd spreadsheet at home, which is about the sorts of targets I'm following. It's, it's almost like sort of loose account management, if you like. I'm not actually billing for the work, but actually what I'm doing is I'm keeping them in check. And I might stick something in my, my diary to say, well, in three months' time, I'll give them another buzz, and I'll give them another buzz. But I think you need to be fairly sensible about this and say, perhaps that is the lead that's going to go cold on me. Um, and it's a tough one. It's a tough one to read. There's no science behind it about when you should give up. But actually, hopefully, you've got a number of irons in different fires, and actually, others may take over where you think, actually, yeah, that's probably time to put that to one side. But if you're actively marketing your business, maybe there are opportunities to invite them along to other things. One tip I've, I've learned very, very well is get your clients to sell, your, sell you. <laughs> you know, if you can get clients mixing with new targets, there's nothing more powerful than a client saying, he's not bad, rather than you saying, and by the way, I'm not bad. It's actually quite powerful to have clients and targets mi mixing. So that might be part of a, a longer burn to say, well, if it's, it has cooled down, maybe we could do something else. OK. Any other thoughts? Yes. Should, is it bad form to take notes in the early part of these meetings? I don't think so, actually. Um, you need to play it quite carefully, but I think, like our active listening, like we're demonstrating we're listening, occasionally we, it... it it could be quite good for your impact to say, hmm, and actually making a few notes. If you're actually transcribing and not looking at them in the slightest, notes kind of get in the way of eye contact. So you might be careful and cautious about balancing the, engaging them in a real conversation and making a few notes. Now, if you're going with someone else, even better. You can have a note taker and someone who can sort of lead the meeting if you like. Um, but I don't think it's bad form taking notes. And in fact, it does show a genuine interest occasionally. I have had moments where um, I've sat in meetings with other people and probably the wrong thing to have taken down <laughs> has been noted. Maybe some personal matter. <laughs> Someone's sharing some personal thing. Oh, really? So you've been to see the doctor. Right. Oh, was it bad? Really? So it might be poignant about the sorts of things you're seen to be taking notes about. But a few notes, absolutely brilliant. And you can go through your notes during the meeting and, and actually make some shape in your summaries. Perhaps it's, it's great because we've talked about that. And that seems to link quite nicely with this. And that probably is something that you could look at as well. So the notes can prompt you and, and help you give shape to what you've heard. And you play that back and there's nothing more impressive than the chaos of, of, a, of maybe a client or a target's life being given real shape by somebody who really understands and can see through that to have some order. So notes are OK. Final question. Anybody got anything else? Yes. <clears throat> Let's say things are not going well, and they're probably not in your target market. Or... How do you exit gracefully? Good question. Um, have people been in that situation? You think, actually, this is probably the wrong meeting to be in, or what they're talking about is clearly not what we do. And maybe either there's been a mix-up or a breakdown in communication. I would always leave the meeting positively. Remember that. So it's been great chatting. And perhaps the things you've been talking about is not strictly the sorts of things that we, we deal with. But at least you're clear now about some of the things we could possibly help you with. And we should stay in touch, perhaps. 
And I think that warm feeling at the end of a meeting, rather than saying, I'm out of here, I think actually would put you in a much more favourable light. That kind of, to create that favourable impression in a meeting is really, really important. So whatever happens, try and leave that meeting in a positive way. And you make a note to yourself to say, this might not necessarily be one of the leads I chase next week, but we'll keep it kind of logged. And you can put it down to experience as well. Crikey, how often do you get the chance to practice this stuff? And each time you get a meeting, a business development meeting in your diary, use it. You know, almost you can do some self-coaching around, you know, how did I do? What did I do well? What's the sort of thing I could work on? And we could do a little bit of reflection after the meeting to say maybe there was something in that that I did that didn't help that, or maybe it was just the situation. Maybe there, there wasn't that business opportunity there, but we'll log it as an, an experience. All right. Okay, any other burning questions? Or? Yeah. Yeah, oh, there's two, actually. I'll do both, actually. What was your question? Yes, um, when you talked about um, developing a, a, an agenda when you go into the meeting, mm -hmm. do you start by what the, uh, the other person is going to say? Do you develop the agenda from that? What do you think is going to be of more interest in that meeting to the person you're meeting? What are you talking about? I think what they're interested in is probably going to be of vital importance. Another tip you could do, rather than just opening up and saying, what sort of things were you interested in? A tip that I've developed is that there might be three things that I'm sort of bringing to this meeting that, that could be potentially an opportunity. I might go in there and say, I've got a couple of ideas that I've brought. I've got A, I've got B, and I've got C. Um, any of those take your fancy? Anything that... Anything there that you'd like to talk about first? Because they might choose C, and you're talking about A, and you get on to B, and, ah, oh, we've run out of time. No time to talk about C, and you're out the door. So it could be a way of just mixing up the agenda and making sure that they're talking about the things that they want to talk about. And again, I think it's investing in the relationship. Even if you've had a meeting where you haven't got on to talk about the sale, it, it will happen. If it's going to happen, it will happen. And so to keep that in mind, to say there's, nothing, there's no harm in organising another meeting, it's a great way to say, let's meet again, let's really build the relationship. So if we don't talk about it now, let's talk about it another time. But if you can talk about what first and develop that agenda around their interests, much more powerful. OK? Go on, one more. I'm enjoying this. Any thoughts? Yes. Whether someone deals with you, do people still buy from people? How interesting. That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I happen to overhear somebody who runs a sales course, and we're kind of in the business of running courses, and he is adamant that, that price should never be negotiable. <laughs> he is absolutely, you go in there, that's your price, that's what you're going to do. And perhaps there's some value if you want to drive the price as hard as that. Um, I've actually been in business meetings where I'm thinking of a price in my head around what I think this is worth. And actually, I've done such good work in that meeting and really kind of got them interested and excited about the sorts of things I can do, is I've actually asked them the question, what sort of budget do you feel you might have for this? And they've come in with a higher price than I've got. So actually, sometimes around price, keep your mouth shut, ask a few questions around what sort of price range they're looking at. Because actually, price can really hold you back. So keep the questions flowing. And keep the interest high, because I think if people are genuinely interested, sometimes, more often than not in my experience, price isn't so much an issue. Because if you delve into the world of the client, actually they just want an easy life. You know, they'd rather pay more and have an easy life and save a bit of time. So actually price could be pushed down the list of priorities. So be very, very careful about jumping in. Ask a few questions first. All right. It's a question or another glass of wine. Your call. <laughs> How are we doing? Are we doing okay? Right. That's me. So I'm going to be wandering around the room. If you've got a, 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 a question you'd like to ask me at a one-to-one -one level, yeah, let's have a chat. Um, and I genuinely believe I would like you to try this stuff out. If it works, drop us an email. I'd be very interested to say, my goodness, my man ears have changed to active listening ears, and I'm nodding and flashing and grunting. And my clients are loving it, and business is booming, or whatever. 
But if you want to, if you've got a question or, yeah, I've got this situation, Martin, what do you think? Do ping us an email because I respond pretty quickly. And I'm really, I'm really, because I run a, I don't run a huge business, but I run a business that is, is doing okay. It's doing rather well. And I think some of the things that I've found, I'm more than happy to share with people who are also wanting to build their business too. Okay? So I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Just um, a couple of things, uh, just to finish off here after we go away and plan, implement and follow up on our mm -hmm. meeting skills. Um, thank you to a few people. Firstly, to the GLE, our partner, for this evening. Um, Cole McMillan is here from the GLE, and if any of the small businesses represented here are interested in taking up the services, the free workshops that the GLE um, sponsors, please have a chat to Cole. He's at the back of the room, and there is some literature at, um, the, at the entrance that uh, may be of interest to you. To Better Bankside, Giles, our um, neighbouring bid, thank you, and um, your team for their, um, what they've put into tonight. Before you get the opportunity to uh, accept our glass of wine and some canapes, can I just say that thank you to Frizzante Cafe who sponsored the food for this evening. So um, there's lovely snacks and canapes available for us later. And um, to the Unicorn Theatre for the use of their wonderful stage and um, venue downstairs. Thank you. So thank you and we'll chat and catch up downstairs. Good night. Wonderful. Thank you.